What? Perfect. Black Swan is a cautionary tale about toxic perfectionism. In the final moments of Darren Aronofsky's film, Natalie Portman's Nina uses a shard of mirror to kill her malicious double, claiming the lead role in Swan Lake as hers. It's my turn. Nina thinks she's destroying her rival ballerina Mila Kunis's Lily, but in reality, she's destroying herself. On stage, we see her at last fully become the Black Swan, now free from the controlling repression of the White Swan within herself. When Nina returns to her dressing room and gets a visit from the still-alive Lily, You completely blew me away! She realizes what she's done, and she completes her final dance as the White Swan just before she dies. So what are we to make of this ending? When we look at this from Nina's point of view, it almost feels like a happy ending, as she seems blissful to have at last achieved her dream of artistic perfection. It was perfect. But the truth of this ending is tragic. Her perfectionism literally killed her, and most would agree her perfect performance cost way too high a price. Here's our take on how Black Swan's ending depicts the deadly mental and physical consequences of perfectionism, and how it teaches us to go beyond perfection into creative freedom. Want to be perfect. Perfection is not just about control. It's also about letting go. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. This video is brought to you guys by Mubi. We love Mubi so genuinely. It is a key part of our lives. Mubi is such an incredible platform. It has wonderful movies and interesting conversations around those movies. Mubi always picks something that's interesting, that's quality. I crave that curation today. You feel like you've actually taken in something substantial and then you think about it, you dream about it. It stays in your head. They have great taste. It's something for everybody. If you want to know about the world and culture and what's really fun and worth watching, check out Mubi. Right now, Mubi is offering our viewers 30 days free. Just click the link in the description below to start streaming now. Thank you, Mubi, for supporting The Take and for helping us bring these videos to you. Marga Fontaine said, if audiences knew what pain the dancers were enduring, only people who enjoyed bullfights could bear to watch it. Black Swan is a character study of an obsessive artist willing to die for her art, risking her body and mind in the dangerous pursuit of perfection. Perfectionism, defined as a combination of excessively high personal standards and overly critical self-evaluations, is a fact in the world of professional ballet, which is not just an art, but also a fiercely competitive blood sport. As seen in the film, a ballerina's body is in constant motion, undergoing long hours of physical pain. On more pull, okay? Okay. In this intensely competitive field where a dancer's career lasts only as long as their youth. He just needs to try something new, that's all. No. Someone new. <laughs> like hey. Like someone who's not approaching menopause. Dancers are pressured to feel that perfection in their field is equal to the pain they can withstand. According to professional dancers Crystal Nichols and Mia Linden, perfectionism does not truly exist. It's utterly unfathomable and unattainable, yet is still so coveted within the dance scene. Our minds allow us to see perfectionism within other dancers, yet never truly in ourselves. Black Swan interprets its central ballet, Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake, through this lens of perfectionism. Nina dreams of playing the lead role because dancing both swans is a pinnacle of achievement for any ballet dancer. Every dancer in the world wants a role. But chasing her dream of perfection involves the contradiction of battling her perfectionism. Her inherent precision won't allow her the freedom that's required to embody the role of the wild seductress black swan. It's very nice. <laughs> but I knew the white swan wouldn't be a problem. The real work would be your metamorphosis into her evil twin. So Nina's journey to actual perfection in the role is counterintuitively about letting go of her attention to excellence, giving up control in order to let the art overtake her. Aronofsky's other films are also interested in how this obsessive, self-destructive pursuit of perfection aligns with creative genius in any field. The Wrestler, which Aronofsky has described as a companion piece to Black Swan, follows aging professional wrestler Randy and his struggle to accept retirement. The only ones are gonna tell me when I'm through doing my thing is you people here. 
In both films, the camera puts us in the character's distressed psychological state and shares in the extreme physical pain they endure for their crafts. Both performers go through an identity crisis when their relationship to their art is challenged because they don't know who they are without it. I'm a professional wrestler. That's not a good idea. Your heart has been through a lot. And the film's endings parallel each other. One ends with a black screen and one white, but both involve the performer choosing to make the ultimate sacrifice in order to reach the highest possible achievement in their art. The wrestler and Black Swan certainly express an awe for their protagonist's level of professionalism, artistry, and commitment. But the film suggests that even if Nina's or Randy's choice has a certain twisted beauty to it, the character's inability to reconcile their artistic nature with the greater world is ultimately tragic. Doing my thing, I'm going to work. <laughs> Your heart. There's a similar conclusion in the director's first feature, Pi, about a mathematician obsessed with number theory and finding the answer to the universe and understanding total order. I'm looking for a way to understand our world. In the end, Max's quest drives him to destroy his brain, and the film's final scene, in which he's lost much of his mental awareness, suggests that the only way we can obtain peace or relief is to let go of that pursuit of godlike total knowledge. What's the answer? I don't know. What is it? I went to see Swan Lake um, at the ballet and um, didn't know that one dancer played two roles, a white swan and a black swan, and it was sort of an aha moment. Ballerinas are trained to examine their reflections. You lost weight. Take off your shrug, please. They fixate on their bodies, movement, style, beauty, and especially their imperfections. In Black Swan, Nina is surrounded by mirrors and sees herself everywhere, at first mainly in reflective surfaces that feel like they're threatening her. Her mother also paints and displays paintings of Nina, which eventually become hallucinations. As Nina starts to break, her face is also projected onto menacing others. Her hallucinations start attacking her, and her mirror version of her dancer self literally takes on a life of its own. All this dramatizes how for the self-critical perfectionist, reflections of oneself are terrifying because of all the flaws and inadequacies they will no doubt reveal. Meanwhile, Nina is also mirrored in the film's other characters. Just as the black swan is an inverse mirror of the white swan, Nina's most significant doppelganger is Lily, the black to Nina's white, embodying the dark impulses the protagonist needs to channel in order to embody the duality of the Swan Lake Role. I carry a spare, in case I wake up somewhere unexpected. Restrained, proper Nina fears Lily because she is all the things Nina thinks she can't be. Sexually expressive, impulsive, and open. I watch the way she moves. Imprecise, but effortless. She's not faking it. But this id-like shadow manifests Nina's repressed desires, revealing that on some level, Nina longs to be free of her own demanding precision. Lily has somehow risen to similar heights in her career while retaining the effortless attitude of someone who expects success and doesn't need to obsess over it. Get warmed up. No, it's okay. I'm good. When they go out one night, Lily eats a cheeseburger, takes drugs, and drinks alcohol without concern about tomorrow's rehearsal or agonizing over her decisions. Nina and Lily embody the dichotomy of the Madonna whore complex, the innocent, virginal, controlled good girl versus the evil, sexual, destructive bad girl. Our society still largely pushes women into one of these two categories. And here, the dichotomy also mirrors the actual story of Swan Lake. The white swan is pure and graceful. Virginal girl, pure and sweet. Whereas the black swan is seductive and dangerous. The lustful twin, the black swan, tricks and seduces him. In her life, Nina's getting mixed messages about which swan she should emulate. Her mother praises her for being a good girl. You sweet girl. While her director, Thomas, suggests that to be a star, she must be a more daring, sensual woman. That was me seducing you when it needs to be the other way around. And since all of the people around her have their own visions of perfection, no matter what she does, Nina can't be everyone's version of perfect. 
Mirroring the white and black swans, the monochrome colors throughout the film's costume and production design are used to show the contrast between Nina and Lily, and how their world constantly confronts them with their black and white labels, the divide of being either the light or the dark woman. In this society, trying to dance both roles, to be both the good and the bad girl, feels impossible. The black and white color scheme of the film also reflects how Nina's childlike mind sees the world in oversimplified terms. Erica contributes to Nina's black and white mindset with her extreme reactions to Nina's behavior. My stomach's still in knots. Fine. Then it's garbage. Which sends the message that everything Nina does is either good or bad, making her mom proud. I don't mean to do swan queen. <laughs> or angry. You have any idea what time it is? Erica is another mirror for Nina in the film. Since ending her career, Erica's put all of her attention on making Nina the perfect ballerina. And Erica puts overwhelming pressure on Nina to be the perfect daughter, a flawlessly obedient copy of her mother's image of perfection. He promised to feature me more this season. Well, he certainly should. You've been there long enough, and you're the most dedicated dancer in the company. By infantilizing her daughter, Erica ensures that Nina's womanhood stays suppressed, keeping her both desexualized and good. This is highlighted in Nina's childish living space, which is filled with stuffed animals, dolls, and pink butterfly wallpaper. It's also shown in how Erica violently cuts Nina's nails, treating her like a child who is incapable of caring for herself. It's all this pressure. I I knew it'd be too much, I knew it. Nina takes on this behavior, obsessively cutting and filing to keep herself from scratching, like a form of punishment and repression. But her scratching at her skin is an act of defiance, which angers her mother. What's that? because it's an imperfection. Throughout the film, we can also find a strong connection between Nina's perfectionism and her sexual repression. He always said you were such a frigid little girl. Nina's blossoming into an empowered artist is intertwined with her sexual awakening. After a lifetime of repression, Nina's launched into womanhood. Toma uses sex to get Nina to tap into her creativity and passion. Would you f that girl? No. No one would. He also pits Nina and Lily against each other, purposely sharing his admiration for Lily, and eventually making Lily her alternate. The black swan role is the impetus for Lily and Toma to urge Nina to let it go, let it go, and explore her body. Go home and touch yourself. At the dance club, as Lily seduces Nina into letting go of her correctness, we see Nina's image multiply, merge with Lily's, and turn into the black swan, representing her sexual transformation. And as Nina transforms further into the black swan, she claims dominance and agency of her sexuality. This involves both the confidence to overpower and assert herself with Toma, and to break free from her mother's control. What happened to my sweet girl, huh? She's gone! Details like how the club scene includes flashes of the butterfly wallpaper in her bedroom, or the scene where Nina tries touching herself and quickly realizes her mother is asleep in her room, symbolize that the good girl image imposed on her by her mother is stifling Nina's growth, both as a woman and an artist. The fact that Erica was only 28 when her ballet career ended. I just mean as far as my career was concerned. What career? The one I gave up to have you. You were 28? and the exaggerated girlishness of Nina's surroundings underline another dimension to the perfectionism plaguing Nina, ballet's premium on youth. When you start getting older, there's all this <laughs> ridiculous pressure. God knows I understand. This comes out in another mirror character, the company's previous prima donna, Beth. Nina is Beth's replacement as the older star is forced into retirement because of the ballet world's ageism. No one comes to see her anymore. Beth's such a beautiful dancer. Yeah, so is my grandmother. Nina sees Beth as the perfect dancer and even steals her things just to feel close to her level of perfection. But up close, she sees that Beth is broken and severely unhappy, a preview of what this ruthlessly perfectionist, ageist world will eventually turn Nina into if she continues on this path. She walked into the street and got hit by a car. And you know what? I'm almost sure she did it on purpose. In the end, Nina finally goes beyond perfection into true artistic passion. Letting go means taking the risk of not being perfect, the loss of control that Nina fears most. Forget about control, Nina. I want to see passion. You're stiff. You're stiff like a dead corpse. Let it go. An important influence for this theme in Black Swan is 1948's The Red Shoes, about a young dancer, Vicky Page, who is completely consumed by dancing. 
Why do you want to dance? Why do you want to live? I must. That's my answer too. Vicky briefly dances as the Swan Queen in the film, a scene that uses the spinning camera technique that we see in Nina's audition. Come on, the foot here like a spider spinning a whip. Attack it, attack it. In that story, based on the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen, a pair of red shoes compel the wearer to dance to death. Like Nina's, Vicky's personal life starts to mimic her ballet, blurring the lines of reality until Vicky is overtaken by the red shoes, which symbolize her passion for dancing. In both The Red Shoes and Black Swan, that passion does set the woman free, but it also burns with such intensity that it destroys her. Julian. Yes, my darling. Take off the red shoes. In the end, Nina is liberated from Thomas, her mother, and her inner critic, even literally freed from being trapped in her own skin. Thus, the film makes the point that perfectionism erases a sense of self. At the beginning of the film, Nina doesn't know who she is. By striving to be simply the perfect good girl, she's neglected to develop a specific identity. Finally, Nina has to kill her former white swan self to escape from the prison of her perfectionism. And when she declares that her performance was perfect, she's not really talking about lacking errors. She's referring to artistic transcendence, originality, and the experience of fully becoming her role. I always knew you had it here. It's in losing control and risking imperfections, Nina's able to reach true greatness as an artist. As the saying goes, the perfect is the enemy of the good, and if you're always striving for perfection, you're likely to spend your life unsatisfied. Meryl Streep spoke about how she discovered this through playing perfectionist Miranda Priestly in The Devil Wears Prada. And this layout of the Winter Wonderland spread, not wonderful yet. A role that she said left her in a bad mood because she entered that mindset of feeling nothing is ever perfect enough. I think when you're a taskmaster and very, very disciplined and controlling, that everything is not quite right all the time. As we discussed in our Miranda Priestly video, Miranda is an other-oriented perfectionist, setting impossible standards for her employees, while Nina is a self-oriented perfectionist, torturing herself with an unattainable bar. But ultimately, both are toxic. Black Swan portrays the obsession with perfection as both fatal and misguided. To achieve creative greatness, we don't need to seek total control, but instead transcending and escaping that control. Surprise yourself so you can surprise the audience. Transcendence. So how can we resist toxic perfectionist thinking? A key step is to become more forgiving and accepting of our limitations as human beings, starting with forgiving ourselves for our imperfections. Nina learns that she can't be perfect and follow her creativity to the fullest. So if she leaves us with any message, it's to choose creativity. Choose to be free. This is your moment, Nina. Don't let it go. This is The Take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. Please subscribe and never miss a take. Thanks again to Mubi for sponsoring today's video. One film I absolutely love on Mubi this month is Ron. Akira Kurosawa's masterpiece reimagines Shakespeare's tragedy King Lear and sets it against a samurai backdrop. It's an epic tale that no movie lover should miss. If you're anything like me, these days you may be totally uninspired and stuck when it comes to figuring out what to watch next. Subscribing to Mubi completely fixes that. Their team of curators handpicks every film they show, so there's always something new to discover. They seriously love movies as much as we do, so their recommendations are always top notch. As a special gift to our viewers, Mubi is offering 30 days free, so click the link in the description below to start streaming now.